and thank you for stopping by the Weldon PC YouTube channel or Facebook or wherever you found this. Uh, today we're going to be replacing the keyboard on this Dell Studio 1555. The client doesn't like the fact that some of the keys have worn off, which is a normal complaint. So we'll go ahead and get started. First we're going to pop the battery out, set it off to the side. Now my tools are going to be a Phillips head screwdriver and a paper clip. An IT man's delight. There's a screw right underneath the battery that we're going to remove. We will remove that screw and set it up to the side for now. And then the reason I have a paper clip is very simple. When you have the screw hole right here, you open the laptop up and you poke the, the, the paper clip through there and then you'll get some rise out of the um, component that was screwed down. And the reason we're doing that is so the part pops up with minimal effort and less chance of damaging the, uh, the bezel. So in the meantime, I'm going to pry this piece out here. As I like to call it, we're going to do a grip and rip. So I'm going to continue pulling this out here. And you want to be careful that you don't pull at too much of an angle. If you do, you do run the risk of damaging the little tabs on the bottom of this. So I'm going to pause this, I'm going to take this in the back, and I'm going to shop vac out this area here, even though we're going to put a new keyboard in, uh, just so we're giving the customer the best, um, you know, best product we can. I'll be back in just a minute. Alright, so we've gone ahead and uh, vacuumed the uh, area here out, and we've got a couple screws to remove and one ribbon cable and we're pretty much uh, nearly finished removing this keyboard. So you'll see here and here um, there's a couple screws we're going to remove. And you want to be careful when you do remove the keyboard. You've got ribbons and everything else underneath here that you're going to want to take note of. You want to do this slow so you're not tearing the ribbon cables out. normal. There's some um, tabs to the side and then there's a gate here and the gate on this particular model is going to flip up like this. Use your fingernail, go slow and then you can pop out the old uh, keyboard and then one thing we always do is we want to look for any signs of liquid damage. In this case it's just a lot of crumbs which I'm not sure that the camera can pick up but you see a lot of crumbs in here. Uh, very little sign of liquid damage, and I'll grab some compressed air and get the rest of this debris out. Okay, I lied. I'm not going to get compressed air. We're just going to give the old Nintendo cartridge treatment. So, now that we're clear there, we've got our new keyboard here. Nice and new. Brand spanking new keyboard. And we're going to go ahead and put our ribbon cable in the gate push that gate down give it a little tug our screw holes have lined up our tabs have snapped back into place we're going to go ahead and reapply the screws here. And the one thing to take note of is after you install a keyboard, um, whether you're a technician or a um, do-it-yourselfer, uh, the one thing I suggest, always suggest, um, you know, you buy these under warranty, so uh, you run the risk of uh, running out of that warranty uh, or your money back guarantee um, by not testing every key on the keyboard a couple times, including your function keys, your shift keys. Um, in this case, we don't have a number lock key here, so we're not really worried about the, the numeric lock or anything like that. But we do want to go through and make sure that 
everything else is set. And before I go ahead and pop the bezel back on, I've noticed in these holes, there's some holes here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go back and clean this out as well. So I'm going to put you on hold and I'll be right back. Alright, so we've gone ahead and cleaned our bezel out. And now we're going to go ahead and carefully, and I'm stressing carefully, reinsert the the bezel here. And when you do this, you always get that popping sound. Make sure you go around two or three times so you make sure you have everything and then once you are finished, before you put that last screw back in, go around the keyboard and you want to look and make sure that the keyboard is even with the bezel and the bezel is even with the rest of the case. Just to make sure that you're giving the client a complete um, job. And then we've got one screw to reinstall and then we're going to be off to the testing phase. So we've got our final set screw here. And now we're putting in our battery. And then for good measure, we always clean our customers' computers. So we've already gone through the process of vacuuming the computer. Now you'll notice I've sprayed onto my microfiber rag not the computer, you never spray a computer directly. So we've gone ahead and taken care of that. We're going to go ahead and focus on the bezel because the bezel was not replaced but the keyboard was. And then for the best results use that dirty microfiber on the screen but don't clean it with the microfiber unless you have a brand new microfiber, uh, use toilet paper, clean toilet paper obviously. Not something you've used on another computer only because you'll get dust and debris on there. So I'll spin this around so you can see. And if you notice you're getting uh, some spots there, we're going to use a little bit more Windex to a dry spot here. And we're in pretty good shape. So we're going to go ahead and power the computer. And then we're going to give, give her a test. And I'm not sure if we have a password on this one or not. So what we'll do is we'll use... Oh, okay, good. We don't have a password, so I'll go ahead and run my notepad here. And quick command for running notepad is going to be command R. And that will open the run command. And then once the command uh, prompt, not the command prompt, the run command is open, just type in notepad. You'll notice there's a problem, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the laptop back apart. As soon as I shut down, we're going to find where our issue is.
so there's a power light that is on this side, and you'll notice it is still on. And as soon as it turns off, we're safe to re um, re -dis you know, disassemble the computer again. And hopefully we don't have a bad uh, keyboard. And I'll pause this until we're back off. There's no point in everybody sitting and watching. All right, so we're going to re-disassemble our, it's okay. We're going to re-disassemble the laptop again. We're going to find our issue here. Hopefully we do not have a bad keyboard out of the box. Wouldn't be the first time, but I would much prefer that we get this done for our client the first time. Again, you're going to carefully pry with your finger, no sharp angles. And of course, yours truly, not the screw. Alright, so the screw's out. bezel has come loose, so we're, we're good. What we're going to do is we're going to unloosen and unscrew these two screws here. And what we're going to do is we're going to do this hot, meaning we're going to do the keyboard. Um, we're going to check that gate and make sure that the latch is properly seated. And it's not. So I was a little hasty, it looks like. And then what we're going to do, just in the, for the sake of being thorough, we're going to reinstall the battery and then we're going to test the unit before we put it back together. Which is what I should have done in the first place, but I was hasty making the video and I got what I deserved. So we're restarting the laptop. There we go. So now we've got our keyboard. We're going to open Notepad. And then what you want to do is take the time to go through each key on the keyboard to make sure that there's no dead spots. Sometimes you get a keyboard that has dead spots. Looks like we're okay on this one. And then we're going to go ahead and shut it down and reassemble. Let's do that. I'll re reposition the camera here. We're going to wait for this to turn off. 
and just as you were taught in your computer school, you're not going to do anything further until the power has been turned off and the battery removed. Just wait for this old guy to turn off here. Alright, so we're off. We're going to leave the battery in because we're, we're pretty well reassembled as it is. So we're going to go through the process of making sure we're locked down again. Alright, and then we're going to reinstall the two screws that hold the keyboard down. And we're going to do the screw as well. install the bezel. Again, you want to go slow on this. Okay, you want to hear your clicks all the way around. And I'm just pushing and applying even pressure. And then we want to make sure that everything appears to be even. And we want to do that prior to um, reinstalling that last screw in case it's one of those things where you have to kind of shift to one side, jiggle it around, and then get the thing to go back in. So we're even there. We're going to move our battery. We've got our final screw. We're going to give it one more clean wipe down. I didn't get my paw prints on the screen because getting those paw prints on the screen are not fun to get off. And we don't want to over tighten anything. Tighten it just tight enough that you feel it grab. We're not working on the space shuttle or anything, so let's not um, you know over torque these things. They don't need 400 foot pounds of pressure. And that's it. We will have a very happy customer coming up here soon to grab his computer. My name is Weldon, and you've been at WeldonPC.com, and we appreciate your views. If you like this video, please click the like button below. We ask that you subscribe and share with your friends. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.